Welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Wednesday, March 9. Government is stepping up its response to human trafficking. Attorney General Dale Marshall today announced that legislation to tackle the scourge will be strengthened this year. The U.S. State Department has identified Barbados as a source and destination point for severe forms of trafficking. Marshall says the country must increase its vigilance. This year, we propose to undertake a review of our Trafficking in Persons Prevention Act with a view to strengthening some of its provisions. We hope to start working on that next month with the intention of having amendments before Parliament by summer. We also plan to review our national referral system with the intention of streamlining and strengthening operations. He added that the conditions are perfect for human trafficking to thrive, with so much uncertainty resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic and escalating tensions in Eastern Europe. I must sound a note of caution though, Barbadians need to be vigilant as the harsh economic conditions occasioned by the global COVID-19 pandemic soon to be exacerbated by an unfortunate war in Ukraine, create the ideal conditions for trafficking in persons to thrive. Poverty, war, and the concomitant dislocation of large numbers of people, which we are seeing now, present many opportunities for the unscrupulous criminals who are either operating independently or as part of organized cartels. Either way, we must be on our guard. In today's interconnected world, the Caribbean and Barbados are not far away from such trouble spots. Help is on the way for the island's tourism operators as they brace for higher commodity prices and a possible impact on visitor arrivals as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Today, Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins told the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association's first quarterly general meeting that as chairman of the Caribbean Tourism Organization Council of Ministers, she has already initiated discussions on the measures to cushion any fallout. That your costs are going to likely be impacted by increasing costs of your supplies and your goods that you have to import. And even with the concessionary frameworks that you referenced earlier, CEO, we still have to be able to look at the costs that are not captured by that, including freight and shipping and those kinds of costs, kinds of things. And so we are going to be working, obviously, under the umbrella of the ministry, which is both tourism and international transport. And that captures both the Bridgetown port for maritime shipping, where the 90 percent of our goods that service your industries come from, as well as the Grand Islands International Airport, where the perishables in particular tend to come in and how that we can work with those partners who are shipping and who are part of the supply chain to ensure that we have one, a continuous supply of all of the goods that you require to service your properties. But secondly, look at the question of what those goods are going to cost. Minister Cummins also revealed that moves are afoot to welcome new airlift to the island and develop new source markets to help bolster the island's tourism product. So I know that there is concern about what is happening in Europe. And so we don't have any control over those things. And if COVID has taught us anything, we don't have control over uh, so many things that will happen in our industry, but what we do have control over is our response to those things and our ability to put mitigation strategies in place. One of the things that I've raised this with your CEO and your former chairman uh, over the course of the last few last year, there has to be a diversification in partnership with the BHTA of your marketing of Barbados's product in markets outside of the UK and Europe. Here in the Ministry of Tourism. We have been working, as you've seen, with the Middle East to open up traffic there. We have uh, a, an air services agreement that we are preparing to sign with Qatar. We have looked at and reviewed our existing air services agreement with the UAE, and we are opening talks through our embassy in the UAE in Dubai with Emirates Airlines, and we are preparing to finalize for signature the air services agreement with Saudi Arabia, who you know was here with us just a few weeks ago. That is also meant to open up Middle Eastern traffic. 
Barbados Light and Power customers will not escape higher electricity bills as world oil prices continue to surge, triggered by instability resulting from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The island's lone power company says the conflict is impacting the cost of fuel it buys from the Barbados National Oil Company Limited and other fuel suppliers. BLMP's Director of Operations, Johan Graves, says this will impact customers, but he urged them to conserve energy. Global energy markets have been volatile for several months, and crude oil prices surged past $100 a barrel recently for the first time in seven years. The cost of U.S. Texas crude internationally has increased from U.S. $61 per barrel at the end of March 2021 to over U.S. $120 per barrel in March 2022. This is a concerning situation since it means a rising fuel clause adjustment for our customers. In addition to shifting global fuel costs in any specific period, a customer's monthly bill is driven by electricity usage. With this current situation, we urge our customers to be very efficient in their use of electricity and further in their use of fuel for transport. Small, simple changes in practices such as turning off unnecessary lights and unplugging unused electronics to lessen standby power can have an immediate impact on electricity costs. And when driving, fuel efficiency can be improved by easing up on rapid acceleration, high speeds and sudden braking and by avoiding idling. Now for today's COVID-19 update, there were 175 new cases of the virus, 77 males and 98 females from 1,056 tests conducted on Tuesday by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 44 persons were under the age of 18 and 131 were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities is 55, while 1,462 are in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region in Jamaica, relief is coming for those most affected by the massive increase in gas prices. This and other benefits were announced by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark as he delivered the 2022-2023 budget will be debate. Worked out. Never say me never did that one, you know. A little of that. Dr. Nigel Clark sending a message to the opposition as he reminded them about tax givebacks under his administration. With oil prices reaching over 120 US dollars per barrel due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there have been calls for the government to reduce the tax on petrol. Instead of a wholesale reduction, targeted support for those most affected. And we will establish a special provision in the amount of two billion dollars to target support to those who are most adversely affected and who have the least ability to absorb the impact of high gas and energy prices. Details of the allocation will be worked out after the ministry consults with the stakeholders. But I can easily see, you know, some of it being used to provide some relief to taxi operators who have fixed fares and some being relieved, used for children on path who have transportation costs and so forth. In terms of a long-term strategy, incentives are coming for those who buy electric vehicles. And by reducing the import duty on electric motor vehicles from 30% to 10% for an initial five-year period. And for exempting the annual registration fees 
and battery electric vehicles. In the meantime, with inflation for January almost at 10%, support is also coming for the most vulnerable. The Labour Ministry will partner with organizations such as the Jamaica Red Cross, Food for the Poor, and the Adventist Relief Association to identify persons. And we are putting $200 million behind that initiative in the month of March to be spent over the next three weeks in response to what has been experienced. On the international scene, Ukrainian officials say a hospital complex in the besieged southeastern port city of Maripol has been hit by a Russian attack, injuring at least 17 people. A day of relative calm along temporary avenues of escape. War came suddenly to the people of Ukraine. Getting away from it is much harder. From cities like Sumy in the north, where residential buildings were struck overnight, and from Enegoda in the east. Even from Mariupol in the south, among the most embattled of all, they're fleeing scenes like this, the remains of a maternity hospital, another inexplicable tragedy in conditions the Red Cross describes as apocalyptic. For many civilians still trapped in the ruins of their cities, there is no respite. Nor for medical teams in hospitals where the injured arrive daily. How are you, little Vova? The doctor asks. I am fine, replies the boy, following surgery to remove a bullet from the base of his skull. We have operated on four children, and sadly one little girl has died. In an arc of smaller towns close to the capital, Kiev, the great escape continues on foot, much of it here, from places like Butcher and Irpin, where a distraught toddler can't bear to let go of the father who must stay behind and defend the town. <laughs> and from Hostomel and Markariv, where 13 people died on Sunday queuing for bread. Friends, these are very difficult times for Ukraine, for our city. But Irpin stands. Irpin holds the defense. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.